Hi there. Welcome to the Cool Flowers Virtual Book Study. I'm Lisa Mason Ziegler and I'm the author of the book Cool Flowers. And I welcome you here as we go through this book chapter by chapter, connecting the dots on this amazing group of spring bloomers and how you can bring them back to your garden. So before we dive into our study this week, um, you can see below there's a couple of links. Um, one link is that where you can sign up to have um, the hot link dropped into your email box just as soon as it's live each week. Also, there's a place where if you need your, to pick up a copy of Cool Flowers, um, list of vendors there where you can select your favorite vendor to, to get one of those. And also, there's a place where you can post your comments, your questions, your, your experiences, and I want to encourage you to do that. We are loving seeing all these comments come in, and I will tell you that it fuels me. So please keep them coming. There are no dumb questions. And I can promise you that if you have it as a question, there's other, many other people that are looking that have that very same question. So please, um, I appreciate it when you post your comments. And lastly, this study is available on my website all the time. Um, the website is thegardenersworkshop.com and there's a page for the Cool Flowers virtual book study and you can revisit past weeks, um, share them with your friends, um, and find all these links. So I appreciate it when you use those. Um, so this week we are going into flower by flower. I have listed in Cool Flowers 30 of, um, these are not the only hardy annuals, um, but these were just 30 of my favorites and that I had great experience with growing. And so, and I'm going to, we're going to look at how you can look at the flower profile and figure out how to include that flower into your, into your own garden. And I want to start um, by each flower has a page and I have listed all the information that you need to start it, how, where to grow, I mean, what zone to grow it in, what varieties um, to select from, and that's key, um, and then some harvesting information also. So the first thing I want to look at is starting it from seed. Um, and a coming chapter is the, the details on actually starting from seed, but on each profile page, it tells you which method of seed starting um, to start that seed. And I will share with you that this is um, a real key step to success is I often get questions um, from people that are trying to start a seed in the opposite way that that seed requires. For instance, folks that are trying to start a seed indoors, that is incredibly difficult to do because you really should be sowing it outdoors. And so this piece of information is key. So on the profile page, it says start from seed. And I'm going to read um, one here for you. So start from seed. I'm looking at Black Eyed Susans, which is um, Rudbeckia. And these are not the rudbeckias that you find in growing in the ditches. These are um, we grow we grow a lot of rudbeckia on this farm and in our gar and in our landscape also because it has huge benefits. Um, and so I want to read how you would start this from seed. It says start from seed. So indoors, do not cover. That means do not cover the seed. And there's a key at the beginning of this chapter that tells you what the, a longer explanation of these phrases. So sow indoors, do not cover, or sow outdoors, do not cover it, and it should sprout in seven to 14 days. So this particular seed can be started indoors or started outdoors. I always list the way I start it first my personal preference. So Rudbeckia, Black Eyed Susans, are, will reseed themselves out in your garden. It'll make a flower, make seed, and drop a seed. The varieties that we list are not nearly as pesky as the most common um, Rudbeckias that just carpet your garden with reseeded plants. 
So when you sow these seeds out in your garden, there's just more opportunity of failures than there is from starting inside and walking out with the plant and planting it. When we walk outside with a plant ready to be trans transplanted into the garden, we very rarely ever lose a plant. But when we sow seed straight in the garden, stuff just happens, right? You know, whether you let it get dried out for a period of time or a bird feasts on it. Um, so we list, I list, the method that I follow first whenever you've been given a choice. Um, and the do not cover or to cover the seed with soil is also essential and we go into talk about that how to do that actually in the seed starting method um, so each seed has a different requirement and then on page 138 there is a quick reference where not only does it list the um, <clears throat> zone hardiness but it lists for a quick reference seed starting method and it says there preferred method listed first so I know I still refer to this <laughs> you know you're it's been like we're getting ready to go into seed starting time <clears throat> and my niece who does our seed starting will say do do we start that inside or do we plant it out in the garden and sometimes it's like oh I've, I've, it's been a year let me go look and this is where I go look so page 138 can really help you out with that so let's just imagine that I live in zone five and I'm trying to find something to plant in the fall, what I can plant in the fall. So you're going back to that quick reference, page 138. And when you look down the winter hardiness zone list, any plant that it says is hardy to zone five, your zone, four or three, those are more north of you, so it's colder. If it survives in your zone or those north of you, then you can plant it in the fall because it survives your winter, right? I have to tell you one thing about these winter hardiness zones. You'll see a lot of them have seven, which is my zone, and that's because I could not find any documentation to state that it was winter hardy beyond my zone um, so I, I am suspect that there's a couple if not more than a couple that are listed as zone seven that would perhaps be winter hardy in zone six and maybe even zone five um, so I really want to hear from you if you live in a zone north of me and you fall plant and have success with them wintering over um, we really really need to know that information so if a flower is listed as winter hardy in your zone that means you're gonna fall plant that and we've already talked about why is that beneficial because they get established before they have to perform in the spring so it's not documented but I suspect well, I'll tell you one of my suspects one of my suspects is um, the false Queen Anne's lace and that's the black carrot it is so winter hardy here in zone 7 I mean it goes through ice snow wind without cover and looks great so please somebody let me know how that goes for you so back to our um, profile pages um, the other thing so we list you know the, the regular information how tall it gets whether it does well in a container and um, how deer resistant it is but there's also I list my favorite varieties um, and I'll tell you one in particular that is key to success and that's in the foxglove the digitalis we fall plant digitalis is the hardy to zone five this particular one is and it can go from seed to bloom in 16 weeks not all digitalis can do that some of them um, take much longer than that which means they're not a hardy annual they're actually a biennial um, so the foxglove is a great example of how growing the suggested variety is the key to success 
So the plant profile on the plants you want to grow can be a real asset to um, how successful that you are. Um, and then I told you that I was going to <clears throat> mention um, a hardy annual that's not in Cool Flowers that I have since um, Cool Flowers was published have been growing and growing it with great success and that is stock, S-T-O-C-K. Stock is a gorgeous um, spring bloomer. Kind of looks like a snapdragon for those of you that aren't familiar. Um, you know, it's a long spike and has lots of little flowers running up the stem, double rosetted flowers. Um, stock is winter hardy to zone eight. That is one zone south of me. So I do not fall plant stock, but I plant it in very early spring, which for me is six to eight weeks before my last frost date, which means we plant stock between February 15th and March 1st. We get an amazing crop um, of stock. And so we've grown several different varieties, Cheerful, um, Quartet, and so that is one that you can add to your coffers um, to add for your very early spring growing if you are above zone eight. Um, and those of you in zone eight and nine, um, you can plant those in the fall and get very, very early spring blooming. So I hope that this has helped you kind of work your way through um, the plant profile because I know it kind of gets daunting sometimes. You think, oh gosh, I know how to garden, I know how to farm, but the tips that I've listed here in Cool Flowers are those based on growing these plants under these circumstances. So I would encourage you to kind of read a little bit. And so the takeaway notes today, if I was a flower farmer, oh my goodness, so many more spring blooming um, flowers that don't need um, hoop houses and indoor structures um, and you can also extend your bloom. Um, if I can plant something in the fall, let's just take snapdragons for instance, they're hardy to zone four or five I believe, I didn't look. Um, I plant those in the fall, we plant them again in very early spring. The, ver the very early spring planting will not be as robust, will not be as tall, but they're still good but they start blooming later than the fall planted ones. So you can extend your season of bloom time and that is really essential for flower farmers. Um, if I was a home gardener, I'd be thinking about how jealous all my neighbors were gonna be when my garden is busting loose in early spring and into summer with flowers that they can't find and buy to put into their yard. So. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, see you back here next week for week six. And um, please don't forget to post your comments and your questions. And I know there's going to be a lot of questions about specific flowers. Bring them on. We'll be happy to respond to those. And um, see you back here next week.